Today we're going to take a look at the factors that affect nuclear stability. Understanding nuclear stability is really about understanding a battle between two different forces. And the two forces I'm talking about are the electrostatic repulsion, which acts just between the protons in the nucleus, versus the strong nuclear force. And it's, it's always an attractive force. But it's not just between protons, it's between all nucleons. Which means that two neutrons will attract each other, two protons will attract each other, and a proton will attract a neutron, and a neutron will attract a proton. The other key difference between these two forces is the electrostatic repulsion is basically a long-range force. Whereas the strong nuclear force is a short-range force. So over very short distances, it's going to dominate. Over longer distances, the electrostatic repulsion is going to dominate. And the dividing line is somewhere around 10 to the minus 15 meters. So the electrostatic repulsion dominates if the distance between the protons is greater than about 10 to the minus 15 meters, whereas the strong nuclear force dominates when R is less than 10 to the minus 15 meters. And that's why the diameter of a nucleus is typically around 10 to the minus 15 meters. If we consider all the stable nucleides, and we make a graph of the number of neutrons against the number of protons, then all of these red dots here represent the stable nucleides. So you can see here, when you've got small nucleides, the number of neutrons and number of protons is pretty much equal. So you have helium with two protons, two neutrons, carbon with six protons, six neutrons, nitrogen, seven protons, seven neutrons. But as you can see here, the stable nuclei are requiring more and more neutrons compared to protons as you get larger nucleides. And that's fairly easy to understand. And it comes down to the idea that neutrons are better glue than protons because they do not repel electrostatically. So as you get a bigger nucleus, the nucleons are farther apart. So the strong nuclear force is less dominant. And so you need more glue. And the neutrons are going to help increase the strong nuclear force without increasing the electrostatic repulsion. So it's going to be more stable. So for, for larger nuclei, the strong nuclear force is less dominant. So more glue, more neutrons is needed. Now we can't just kind of add neutrons indefinitely and get bigger and bigger nuclei because of course the nucleons are getting farther and farther apart so the, so the strong nuclear force becomes less and less dominant. So increasing the ratio of neutrons to protons helps to an extent but this isn't going to continue indefinitely. If too many neutrons are added, the nucleons are too far separated on the average, and the strong nuclear force cannot dominate. So the nucleus won't remain stable. Here we have two questions that you might be asking yourself. The first is, why are there no very large stable nuclei? It turns out uranium with 92 protons is the largest stable nuclei. So why is that so? And simply because the typical distance between the nucleons in the nucleus is such that the attractive force, that is the strong nuclear force, cannot dominate. So somewhere or another, that attractive force has to win out. And if your nucleus is too big, 
it's not going to happen. And the second question, why do some nucleides produce one kind of radiation, such as beta decay or positron decay or alpha decay, and not another? What's kind of the determining factor there? And so let's look at that question in more detail. So here we have that same graph that shows the number of neutrons against the number of protons for all the different nucleides. And these blue dots represent the stable nuclei. The stability band, the green here, those represent an area where there's unstable nuclei. So if we were to consider beta emission, beta emission, as you can see with the red here, the beta emission occurs above the stable isotopes. So if you think about what a beta emission is, that's when a neutron changes to a proton inside the nucleus. So what's going to happen there, if you have an isotope right here, and a neutron changes into a proton, then the number of neutrons is going to go down, and the number of protons is going to go up. So basically, you're moving towards that stability line. In other words, to become more stable, fewer neutrons are needed and more protons are needed. The positron emission, the positive beta decay, that occurs underneath those stable isotopes. And if you think about what's happening for positron emission, that's when a proton changes into a neutron inside the nucleus. So we're going to decrease the number of protons and we're going to increase the number of neutrons. So we're going to have a movement from underneath the, the stable isotopes towards the stable isotopes. In other words, the beta decay here occurs when there's too many neutrons. And the positron decay occurs when there's too many protons. And the other option that we've studied considerably would be alpha emission here. And most of the alpha emission is way up here at the top. And you'd also get fission at the top. And remember, fission is when a large nuclei splits into smaller nuclei and becomes more stable in that process. Alpha decay is basically a fission, right? The nucleus is splitting up into smaller nuclei. So we get the alpha decay when our nucleus is simply too big and it becomes something more stable by splitting into two nucleides, one of them being an alpha particle with two protons and two neutrons. So the alpha decay, and likewise fission, occurs when the nucleus is too big. So it splits into two smaller nuclei, and in many cases, one of the smaller nuclei is a alpha particle. You might have noticed that there's a few of these stable nuclei that fall where you don't quite expect them. Most of the stable nuclei are along this zigzag here. But then we have this sort of regular pattern of stable nuclei off that zigzag. And that's really all due to symmetry. If you have an even number of neutrons and an even number of protons, that tends to make things a little more stable. It's kind of like if you have a bunch of books and you put them on a table, you distribute them equally on both sides of the table. You don't put them all on one side because that won't be very stable. And it works the same way with nuclear stability. The other type of radiation that we've talked about considerably is gamma radiation. And you'll recall that an atom has a ground state, and the atom can get into an excited state. The electron jumps into a higher energy level. And then it can fall back down again and give off a photon, which might be in the visible spectrum, could be ultraviolet, could be infrared. But the idea here is that we have a drop 
from an excited state, and because there'd be numerous energy levels within an atom, you would get this, this discrete spectra of different types of radiation that would be produced. In the same way, we can think of a nucleus getting into an excited state and then dropping down to a ground state. And when that happens, a photon can be emitted, but now it's a higher energy photon. It would be a gamma photon. And the nucleus would have multiple discrete energy levels leading to a discrete spectrum of these gamma ray photons, each being derived because the nucleus drops from an excited state. So there's an exact parallel between the energy levels of an atom and the energy levels of a nucleus. So let's summarize the big ideas on nuclear stability presented in the video. The first idea was that there was a battle of forces. On the one hand, you had a repulsive electrostatic force between protons. And this force would dominate when you had distances greater than about 10 to the minus 15 meters. And that repulsive force was going to be balanced by an attractive force between any of the nucleons, the protons or the neutrons. And it tended to dominate. It was a short range force and it dominated when the distance was less than 10 to the minus 15 meters. Secondly, we saw that this ratio of the number of neutrons to the number of protons increased with atomic number. So you required more and more neutrons to hold the nucleus together. We needed more glue. And then thirdly, we talked about the reasons for the different types of radiation. So we have beta plus radiation, beta minus radiation, alpha and gamma radiation. For beta plus, that was when a proton changed into a neutron inside the nucleus, which is going to increase the ratio of neutrons to protons in order to make it more stable. Beta decay was when a neutron inside the nucleus changed into a proton, so that's going to decrease that ratio to attain more stability. Alpha decay or fission, that was when the nucleus was too large to be stable, so it would fire off a combination of protons and neutrons. And of course, gamma decay was due to an excited state that goes to a lower energy level. And these excited states, they exactly paralleled what happened with the atom, and they result in these discrete spectra of gamma ray photons. So please take the time to like videos, to make comments, to ask questions, become a subscriber, sign up for notifications, become a member or a Patreon. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.